we are live. Welcome to 2022's Ms. Marvel Review miniseries. So I am going to start by saying I really love this show. There's not going to be a ton of jokes in this video. There will be some serious stuff discussed. Now, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And yeah, so if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every one of the MCU Disney Plus shows. I haven't watched the other ones yet. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, and... I suppose I'll hold off on saying exactly how much I love this one until the end of the review itself. So, other than the show, worst to best, keeping in mind I love all of them, Loki Season 1, What If Season 1, Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, and WandaVision. So, in, yeah, the show is about, you know, New Jersey, present day. Pakistani-American Kamala Khan, a fangirl of the Avengers, particularly Carol Danvers slash Captain Marvel, struggles to fit in and to find a good balance between her conservative family and the more pop culture-heavy American culture. So, basically... You need to have watched Avengers 4 in order to, I, yeah, or, or at least know the core concepts. Other than that, you can watch this without having watched the MCU up to it, but there are things you're going to appreciate more if you have been watching the MCU. Moon Knight was made for people who don't know anything about the MCU, or made so that people who don't know anything about the MCU could easily watch just that and not be confused. This show was really made for the the fangirls, you know, the, the, the kind of, yeah, Kamala Khan, people, yeah, real life Kamala Khans, whether, you know, you don't have to be an immigrant to love it, although that definitely, you know, if you, if you really don't care about the cultures of, of immigrants, you're going to hate the show. And a lot of people already have. So, let's see. So, yeah, one of the things the show deals with is the tension between conservative orthodox, or con conservative religious family Kamala is growing up in, and the American present-day culture and this theme is very important because there can indeed be tremendous tension there and Kamala's family is incredibly charming and there's clearly a lot of love there sometimes it comes through in being overprotecting but it's not that they just don't care which sometimes it can feel like when you're a child or a teenager and your parents are being strict now, the I'm going to start by going into the writing. The, this, the writing. So, this was written by Bishak K. Ali. And, yeah, that's right. The, she, yeah, she's credited as the, the head writer and basically the... Uh, yeah. Anyway, she's credited as creator and head writer. She is British-Pakistani. And Sana Amanat is, you know, she, she's credited as, it's based on the character that she helped create. And she is Pakistani-American. She based Kamala Khan a lot on her own experience. And, let's see, yeah, and, and they also both, they're, they're feminists. And progressive in general. So, yeah, they, they, the writing is solid, like, it's not flawless, 
there are definitely some issues. The the story pacing is a bit off at times. Maybe a, maybe too much of the time for some people, at least. And the yeah, but the the psychology and just like people behave like real people and in in this show and the yeah just it it really understands all the different people that are in it no no one is just a a stereotype with no layers to them at all and the pilot i would definitely say it is the most emotionally resonant pilot of all the Disney Plus and Sue shows so far. Overall, it's a tie between this and WandaVision for the very best pilots of the Disney Plus MCU shows so far. It really is remarkable. The in in some ways it's similar to the MCU Spider-Man with this, you know, high schooler who is trying to figure out their identity and you know balancing their superpowers with their personal lives and such i did not think i would ever be saying this but i actually i'm more invested in kamala khan than i am in mcu peter parker i really did you know i guess it's not super obvious back there but the the book that's the that's a collection of all the best Spider-Man stories over over decades. And I've read it you know all the way through multiple times. I used to read a ton of Spider-Man. I've never read any Kamala Khan stories, but just the like in the in the MCU Spider-Man movies, there's always like for a while it really works and then they stumble and then they kind of struggle to build up speed again and that just that almost never happened here and yeah and the finale I'm not gonna give any spoilers in this video for it but it's excellent it's one of the best it might be the best of the Disney Plus MCU shows and yeah, so some people take issue with how this was adapted because there are some big differences between the comic book and this show. I understand why it bothered some people. I thought that the changes were largely... I'm, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily say that the show is better than the comic, but I think if they adapted the comic 100%, it wouldn't have made as much sense for the MCU. And... Let's see. Yeah, the show has some really great use of superpowers. And yeah, so the direction. the This was directed by multiple different people including Mira Menon and let's see you know other than this yeah she's directed a bunch of other TV stuff she has yeah she has 21 credits as director of TV and let's see yeah uh, let's see the furthest back TV thing she's directed is 2017. She's been very active in those few years. And yeah, she is Indian American, and that's also part of the, you know, she's Pakistan. Kamala Khan is Pakistani American, but the family, you know, before the partition, it was just India. So there, there's some of that as well, and and some of her family, you know, leans very heavily to towards Indian ancestry. And it, one of the other directors was Sharmin Obaid Shinoy, who was born in Pakistan. She has 
Uh, did I not copy him? Huh. But yeah, she's also directed a bunch of TV stuff. And then there are the male uh, Belgian born director duo. And before, you know, Belgium, there are a number of Muslims in, you know, Belgium, France, and so, yeah. For reasons that I'm not going to get into right now, but yeah. The, yeah, the do the director duo of Adil El Arbi and Bilal Falah. And yeah, together all of these directed the, the six episodes. You know, two, uh, I guess two, is two episodes each? Uh, yeah, basically. And they really bring their, you you know, you can tell that it is their, oh, hmm. Charmaine actually is listed as direct, wait, okay, never mind, it does, for some of them it says three episodes directly, but yeah, you know, you, I'm really, really glad that they didn't try to get some white dude who has only read about Islam to to try to direct this because it would no it would not be the same thing at all. You can really tell that this is you know if it feels so natural that this is these you know the the writer and the directors grew up with this kind of you know the the themselves having to figure out how okay so for the belgian ones not american but how much of a westerner am i how much of a traditional pakistani muslim am i and yeah i they they did incredible job so yeah this is a coming of age high school student story where the lead is smart and a fan of the superheroes that are part of the the world they live in and we, you know, we did get that in the MCU with Spider-Man, but this adds elements like the lead being a Pakistani immigrant and her struggles to figure out exactly who she wants to be. She's not the same as her parents, who are more explicitly traditionally Muslim. She's not the same as her white peers, who are more explicitly consumerist mainstream pop culture aficionados. And we follow as she forges her own identity. I don't know why some critics are claiming this has no conflict or she doesn't struggle as I've just described, there's plenty of conflict and struggles. I've seen some claim that the character has no character flaws. It's just about everybody else realizing how awesome they are. So, you know, some people are saying she's a, a Disney princess, you know, in, in that. No, in her attempts to find this balance, she sometimes accidentally hurts people she cares about, risking alienating them. And it clearly upsets her. Like, she, I... I I think people who are saying that this is a show about a lead who makes no mistakes and has no conflict, just, they have no idea what they don't like about the show. It's just something about it bothers them. And so they write this stuff that makes no sense, that is just, like, demonstrably untrue. Like, you, you see the conflicts. Like, you can watch the pilot episode of this, and there's a ton of conflict. No, I, I, you know, I have seen some people say that it's like, it feels like it was made for the Disney Channel. Ouch. I can see what they mean, but I really don't agree that it, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't go anywhere near that far. I've also seen some people say she's unlikable because of some of the mistakes she makes, to which I say she's a teenager. You might have heard of them. I have a lot of empathy for teenagers, but it would be ridiculous to claim that they never make mistakes and hurt people they care about. It's not about that, and she would be a boring character if it were about, you know, yeah, about a character like that. She would be a boring character if she never made mistakes like that. It's about being mature enough to apologize for the mistakes you make. And we do see that she apologizes. So if you only watch comic book adaptations for superpower use, 
villains, that kind of thing. I enjoy those too. This is not that kind of show, and it's all the better for it. If you have Disney+, Plus, which you must in order to watch any episode of the show, there are 28 MCU movies also on there, almost all of which have a lot of action. So, I, I really, I'm so glad that they're taking all these chances and doing all these unusual things in Phase 4. I, I'm not 100% sure where exactly it's all going, but I find it kind of interesting. I, I'm excited to see exactly where they go with it. And, I mean, when you really think about it, some of the other ones, like Phase 1, was way too constrained. There was way too much trying desperately to make sure everything had shield and, like, everything everything tied together. So Captain America 1 has to have the Elder Stark, and he has to be making inventions. And it's just, it just, you know... Ultimately, they made it work, but I'm I it, it felt very constrained, and now it feels so free. Now, some people may want to know before they start watching, you know, if like you know if Kamala in the comics being inhuman is addressed in the show. So I'm going to be spoiling it. Until you see me lower my index finger. So if you don't want to know, just mute, skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. It does not appear that she's an inhuman in the MCU. And there are reasons for that. For one, they're very complicated. The inhumans need a lot of setup. The inhumans show did very poorly. Also, the creators originally were going to make her a mutant in the comics. And they're actually very very happy that they get to make her one now they talk about it in an article which i'm going to link in the description box for those interested i i personally think their opinion should have a lot of weight in in on this issue and part of the reason she's an inhuman in the comics is that ike perlmutter was trying to push the inhumans hard because he figured the comics about the x-men were just leading to the fox x-men moving doing movies doing better and he did not want that and now that they have the movie rights to the x-men it makes a lot of sense that she is not inhuman and yeah no more spoilers until the next time i verbally warn and raise my index finger so moon knight dipped its toes into depicting a culture that's different from what a lot of us white people are very familiar with. This show takes a full deep dive into that. Some Urdu and Hindi goes untranslated. Some of the clothes, food, locations, music, history, famous people all go unexplained. You can really tell that the writers and directors grew up with this culture. And since Kamala is in some ways very similar to other American teenagers, it communicates to young Americans that South Asian culture is not some alien thing that they can't understand at all. It will just take some work to properly understand it. I I really love about the show that this this is a show where young Muslim women are seen smiling, happy, celebrating, helping to dispel this idea that's existed for so long in Western culture that all Muslim women are put upon, afraid, beaten by their husbands. Yes, it's true. Some Muslim women of some Muslim women. It's also true of many white conservative women. I've met my share of both, and in my personal experience, the ones who have come to the West, Muslim women are a lot happier than white conservative ones in America. And their husbands can be immensely sweet and loving towards them and the children they have together. I've encountered a lot of conservative white men who despise the women that they're with and the children they had together. You know, they'll they'll get... I, I know one who got a divorce as soon as the child was 18. And he only waited, you know, until she was 18 because he didn't want to pay alimony. Or, or the child support is what it's called. And, you know, all three of them, you know, the, the, the child, the man, and the, the mother all hated all those years where they were just waiting for him to finally leave. And, they're, you know, some of them are still miserable about it. If, you know, if you still have... Right, right. 
I really love that here we have a show with multiple smiling Muslim women, including married ones. If you still have that perception of Muslims, all I can say is you've never worked alongside them, you've never gone to school with them. Muslim women can feel and express a lot of happiness. Under the right circumstances, they're not even remotely subtle. You know that noise Xena the Worry Princess makes when she attacks Ululation, I think it's called? That's what at least some Muslim women sound like when they're really happy. When there is at least half a dozen of them, the sound carries. I could hear them in another room from a good 30 meters away. And... Yeah, so I wrote this a while ago, so... Maybe a month ago? Certain weeks ago. I was headed home after grocery shopping, and I saw a young woman who had something covering her hair, and on top of it, a graduation hat. And I love that. She's assimilated enough to pursue higher education, but not lost her identity or culture in the process. I know some people think that something should be done about Muslim women wearing veils, at the very least in Western democratic countries. I only agree when this is approached from a progressive perspective, and the message is that it's important that Muslim women don't feel forced to cover their hair here in the in Western democracies. If the girl or woman herself feels that she would prefer not to cover her hair, there should be someone that she can reach out to, talk to, to, to get to talk to her family if necessary. Not threats, just calm and reasonable talk. I don't think it's something that should be pushed on these women, and I would argue that anyone who comes at it from a conservative point of view and says, oh, if they're in one of these countries, they shouldn't be allowed to cover their hair. I think that's substantially worse than if they were just allowed to wear it. That's creating problems where there don't need to be any. And I would like to just briefly argue with anyone saying that there is an actual problem with pe people wearing these veils. It doesn't affect your life at all. It's not as if they're trying to force you to cover your hair. If they were, I would agree, that's a problem. Once again, it should be solved with the conversation, nothing stronger than that. And let's please not pretend like covering your hair is some kind of absolutely absurd idea that in no way assemble, resembles laws in Western democratic countries. Right now, the law in a lot of these countries say that it's not okay for a woman to bare her nipple in public. Don't get me wrong, I agree that it should not be legal to get your genitalia or bare ass out in a public place, unless it's like a nudist beach, or, you know, or otherwise, it, if it's a, yeah, only in, in very specific circumstances. But a woman's nipple is only sexual if we sexualize it. You know why a number of why a number of straight men look at a woman's breasts as erotic? Because when you boil it down, sexual arousal for straight people, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with sexual or you know, as long as you're respecting consent. It's the lizard brain saying, this is a person you should procreate with. Looking at a woman's breasts might be a way to help determine if she can breastfeed. As long as that's a law, as long as people are uncomfortable with seeing a woman's nipple in public, we really can't judge other people in our countries for covering more of their bodies than we are used to. You know, it's actually, artwork is allowed to be, you know, the, the, in, in my city, there's, there's this one place where there is, I guess, was it? I, I couldn't tell you what material it's made from, but it depicts a nude woman lying down. Now, I'm not saying it would be the same thing for a woman to lie down near it, but no one's, like, our brains aren't melting from nude artwork. So it's, it's not, you know... Like, I, I love that there are conservatives who think that a swastika or the the the, the confederate confederate flag are less offensive to show in public than a woman's nipple you know and and like there are, there are, there are websites where if there's a female nip a, what was it female presenting nipple then you can get stuff taken down you know and and someone tested it with like putting well this is just this is actually art that has nudity in it. I forget if that got taken down or not, but yeah, just like, and there are nudists, you know, no, no one, I've heard of nudist beaches. I don't, I probably have never been to one. I think I would be way too shy, but I've heard of them. What I've never heard of is someone like being rushed away from a nudist beach because their brain melted from seeing naked people 
in public, you know. Once again, I agree. There should only be specific, you know, there, there, are, there are aspects of genitalia and a bare ass that mean that you shouldn't be walking around nude all the time in in you know in western culture either but just acting like it's this completely unreasonable yeah so as a story about teenagers it does subvert some of the stereotypes and tropes but others are just played straight which will bother some some viewers have already expressed this and yeah it seems like a number of people expected this to be like the movies frequent action scenes fast-paced plot that was never what this was meant to be. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense to give a negative review to this just because you came in with the wrong expectations. Like, criticize the marketing, not the show. Honestly, I think, yeah, you know what? I think that should be a thing. I think you should be in... in Because I, I have to admit, I... I don't know. I mean, I, I felt like the show delivered what the trailers suggested it would be but apparently some people felt like it didn't and just i really hate when people criticize like essentially that means that you might actually have liked it if you didn't see the marketing i don't think you should punish the movie or show for what the marketing department did that those yeah and others have pointed out there's way more color in this show than a lot of the mcu and yeah so the because of Kamala's right quoting fellow critics here because of Kamala's creativity the show does creative visualization of text messages similar to EZA and other teen films and her imagination appearing on the ground walls etc she will imagine character mashups and real life scenarios and will see them animated sometimes just like the background but sometimes full animation and I would say there isn't too much of it. It doesn't get exhausting. I that was one thing I was a little bit concerned, like because there's there's a lot of it right at the very start, but that's not really to set up that there will be a lot of it. It's just to give you an idea of this is what her mind looks like. You know, she's always imagining this stuff. Now let's see. It, yeah, some went back to. Quoting fellow critics, the visualizing of the superpowers is very obviously CGI and does not gel with the rest of the show. The way this show is directed and edited is amazing, feels very artistic, and it's something I really enjoy about the show. In a sense, it's refreshing to see this new type of directing and moral editing in a Marvel TV show. Another positive is that it's interesting to see a Pakistani superhero. Finally, something new in terms of culture and history really enjoyed seeing it but many pakistani people say that their the way their culture is being represented is not very really accurate which is something i can't confirm or deny since i'm not from pakistan but if people feel that their culture is not being accurately represented we do need to point it out 100 percent agreed and let's see yeah one critic said literally the only good thing about the show is the positive muslim representation you know okay they didn't like it i really appreciate that you know this reviewer did say that that was a good thing and i do want to say 100 percent it's not that everybody who dislikes this is racist i've seen people criticize it who aren't you know the the um, sean chandler sean chandler talks about i think it's the channel name has criticized aspects of the show and I, I I don't know personally I've never seen him express any racism or provide cover for racists now let's see yeah so there was this critic who did not like it they gave it a one out of ten okay so they hated it they gave it a one out of ten and said the uh, let's see yeah, the, the show is trying to make Pakistani Muslims relatable and cool. Let them be normal humans and focus on the storyline rather than 
pushing the agenda. I agree that it shouldn't be necessary to depict them like this, but I do think currently it is. Until recently, in particular after 9-11, Muslims were almost always depicted in Western media as inherently bad. So it is necessary to go very far in the other direction in some depictions until enough people accept that Muslims are human beings. Obviously, in real life, some are good, some are bad. If we get a lot of shows that feature some good and some bad, a lot of white conservative Americans are only going to notice some of them are bad. I look forward to the day when they can be complex humans like white men. There are tons of excellent TV shows where a white man is a very complex character, even a bad guy, that we're fascinated to learn more about. Dexter I know about, I hear Mad Men Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones except for the last season. I've, I've only watched the first season of Breaking Bad. I thought it was... I mean... I'm not saying there's some, it's, it's really well made. It's not my kind of thing. The, but, but yeah, you know, there are people who dislike the female characters on those shows more than they dislike the male characters who are actively harming people. You know, the, the for, for the, for those viewers, it just, you really have to get them to accept cuz cuz to them white white men are allowed to be bad but women even white women even you know white women married to white men who are you know helping raise the family and everything they're not allowed to have a problem with white men doing something bad you know for those people you got to hammer home the message that there's nothing wrong with being Muslim before you can get I I look forward to it I think I already said that but yeah I think the most fascinating stories of all are the ones where we're following something some a person who does something bad but we understand them you know monster is one of my favorite movies I I don't think we're there yet for Muslims not not in the West not for conservatives, at least. Okay, so... I take a few issues with the following review, so I'm just going to argue with the, the points as they come up. So, this person gave it a 1 out of 10. It's hard to even look at this squalor, so I have no idea what this person thinks that the word squalor means, but the dictionary definition of squalor is the state of being extremely dirty and unpleasant, especially as a result of poverty or neglect. They lived in squalor and disease. There is nothing on this show that fits that description in the slightest. Like, I, I think they just thought squalor means it's bad. It's it, like they meant to write, it's hard to even look at this bad show. And then they wrote... It's especially funny to read these critics who praise it. Why? I've read all the... I've, I didn't read every single review that's out, because there's like over a thousand on IMDb, but none of the praise that I read was just ridiculous. And the review I'm quoting here contains neither examples nor counter-arguments. And then they go on to say, this is not even surprising because at present it is impossible to criticize creativity that fights for feminism and other minorities. Well, I'm curious to read this person's criticisms of this piece of creative expression. Oh, never mind, the review ends there. Maybe it's not generally impossible. Maybe you just can't do it. And let's see... Yeah, and, and this one person said, you know, the, the scene where she gets her powers is cringe, but doesn't explain why. I don't know what's cringe about it. I thought it was very well handled. And it not it isn't always in the MCU. Reading all the fake reviews that, without a doubt, simply state, I guess you meant, without a doubt, fake? Or are you unsure of what they simply state? And then they say, oh, you know, these reviews simply state, it's fun, colorful, and it has me excited to see how this character develops, etc. Can't wait to see the rest. 
I legitimately have no clue what's supposed to be wrong with that review. And before you say, oh, well, that review, the review he doesn't like is only for the pilot, his review is from the day after the pilot premiered. In other words, no other episodes were available to general audiences, and this is a an audience review, not a, a professional critic. So, yeah, the, the reviews he doesn't like could not be reviewing anything other than the pilot. And I think that's a perfectly fine review of the pilot. The show is fun, colorful, and the, yeah, I was very excited to see how the character develops. And I was largely happy with the rest of the show. So, yeah. And if he doesn't like people reviewing only the pilot, I mean, I think a fair argument could be, I, I, I think, I hope that one day reviews have to, like, specify I watch these episodes and th that's all I'm reviewing and I think an argument could be made that on the main page for a show you should only be able to submit a review once the entire show has aired since it might you know the 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 issues you have might be fixed down the line you know I, I personally think some of the I mean I love Prison Break season one but I think I could understand if some people thought, you know, there are, there are some issues there. I would say a lot of those issues are addressed in season two. So, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, you know, if he doesn't like people reviewing only the pilot, yeah, I, I kind of agree. But why did he enter a review himself? I don't like the fact that Michael Bay movies get positive reviews, but since I stopped watching them, I stopped reviewing them. So, you know, it, it just, yeah, the, the, yeah. And then he goes on to say, makes me realize why people don't trust these sites and their reviewers anymore. That's funny. A lot of conservative reviews are just, this is boring. At least the positive reviews say what they like about it. Without detail, how can we know why you found it boring? Too few action scenes, the story itself, characters. There's a million different reasons why you might find it boring. I don't think the show is, is perfect, but no part of it comes across as boring to me. Not in any way. I love seeing so much of this culture that I'm not used to seeing in American media, especially with such a positive depiction. And maybe you should say who it's boring to. It looks like a lot of teenagers love the show and don't find it boring. It was made for them, not those older than that. And reading other reviews... Oh, hold on. Yeah. I... I think a lot of the people who gave these negative reviews are people in like their 20s or 30s, oh, yeah, 30s and upwards probably. I'm I'm not hating, I'm in my 30s, but people who don't really connect with stuff made for teenagers anymore and it's like I don't know how you watched the trailer for this and didn't realize it's made for teenagers. Like that is that is I I I legitimately have no, I, I guess all you looked at was the Marvel logo then. Because it's, it's completely clear that it's for teenagers and a lot of the time about teenagers. So, reading other reviews, I see others saying there's too much padding. That's detail. That's what I'm asking for. Some people are calling the drama soap opera. I can understand what they mean. I, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't go so far, but soapy, yeah, some of it, yes, some. And, it, yeah, there's constant conflict, but referring to it as saying, you know, a soap opera, some accuracy to that. So, moving on to another review. And, let's see. Yeah, so, so the, 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 I found a review where they said, most of the show is just them trying to get the audience to relate to the family and the culture. It's trying to be so woke by trying to get the audience to be empathetic to this culture. It's just dumb. Do not watch the show. It sucks. So it's bad that it tries to get people to empathize with Muslims. Muslims are victims of a lot of hate crimes. We should, like, I get being angry about 9-11, but hate the Saudi government, not individual Muslims in America, most of whom just want to live normal lives like you. And, you know, there's some chance that that guy didn't think that, you know, the, the, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he meant to separate, you know, most of the show about empathetics of culture 
and it's just dumb, do not watch the show, it sucks. Maybe he doesn't think that that's what's dumb about it, maybe he doesn't think that that's why the show sucks, but he should have made that considerably clearer. And the fact that he uses the term woke, woke as an insult leads me to believe that I'm probably giving him too much benefit of the doubt, and he is just... You know, you don't have to watch it, right? Like, why are you so mad that there's a piece of content in a franchise you care about that isn't for you? I just, I, I do not understand it. Like, I wasn't criticizing Iron Man for, oh, you know, this guy, he's, he, you know, he's, he's this tech head who gets a lot of girls. That doesn't reflect my life at all. You know, de negative review that's, like, just, yeah. And, I, I did, yeah. The, this uh, one critic said, he gave, they gave it a 2 out of 10. Why do we see English dialogue when there are only Pakistani talking together? It's absurd and it really ruins the feeling of the show. So disappointed as it happens multiple times each episode. I definitely understand that criticism. And I think, yeah, I think it does happen multiple times each episode. And, yeah, if, if that, if that takes you out of it, I 100% understand. And I kind of, I mean... I guess it would have been very expensive to make it both ways. Yeah, I th I think they should have had them speaking Pakistani when the... I think that's how you... I, I, I don't mean any offense. I don't mean disrespect. I... Yeah, I, th I think in Urdu, I guess it is. Yeah. I think they should have been speaking Urdu when they were only Pakistani together and just have the subtitles because that for a lot of the show the the Urdu and Hindi go you know will will be subtitled into English I've seen multiple user reviews say the show has no creativity animations in the background using things like brick wall graffiti and neon signs visualizing the imagination of a teenage girl is creative like try again Seriously, that, that sounded more aggressive. I'm trying to imitate Rocket is what I'm... Yeah. It's absurd to say that the show has no creativity. It's just like... Yeah. I just... And let's see. Yeah. This person gave it an 8 out of 10. Refreshingly accurate South Asian representation. Hollywood never does it this well. Being a South Asian and a Pakistani, I was giddy watching all the episodes. Glad that the cast was actually Pakistani. The culture was accurately represented. The songs are bangers and Kamala's story is really well represented as a Muslim South Asian superhero. Can't wait for the final episode and more from this character. Very heartwarming to read. And let's see... The show is culturally diverse and has really cool cinematography. It incorporates technology in a clever, timeless way. And I think people complaining have qualms with other elements of the show they don't identify with, so they're trying to write it off as juvenile. Don't listen to the haters. Give it a chance. And some have said the show is handled in a John Hughes style. Very much agreed, and it makes perfect sense. And some people don't understand why Captain Marvel would be the favorite superhero of any person living in the MCU. So, uh, I guess, yeah. Not spoilers for the show, spoilers for Avengers Endgame. Carol Danvers very nearly stopped Thanos single-handedly, and if not for her preventing him from using the gauntlet right before Tony was able to grab the stones, Thanos would definitely have won. She saved Tony Stark from dying in the spaceship, she took out Thanos' fleet, something Kamala in the pilot points to as something she loves about her. She's one of the two strongest female heroes in the MCU, and as you might be able to imagine, many cis teenage girls are more likely to idolize a cis woman than a cis man. And a strong reason that Kamala might not idolize Wanda Maximoff is that to the public... Okay, yeah, so spoilers for other MCU stuff. Yeah. To the public, she's defined by all the people she's hurt, or accidentally gotten hurt. She started out fighting with Ultron, 
which nearly got the entire planet wiped out. She screwed up in Lagos. These two things combined led to the Sokovia Accords. Then she helped fight the Avengers in, you know, Civil War and, it, you know, airport. And it is possible that by the time they show, the general public know about Westview. Keep in mind, a number of civilians were involved in that. You know, there's some chance that S.W.O.R.D. won't be able to get everyone to keep quiet about it. No more spoilers for the time being. It's scary how small-minded people are offended by a diverse show. The comic, along with the advertisement for the show, show an ethnic teenage girl. It should be no surprise what this show is about. Plus, people that use woke are missing chromosomes and teeth. They should have stayed in school and expanded their vocabulary. And, yeah, and, and I've seen some claim that Kamala is selfish. Nope, she uses her powers for good right from the start. A selfish person would use them for evil. I've seen another say, oh, she just wants to be famous. She wants to be accepted. There's a difference. This is a criticism I've seen from straight white cis men, some of whom can't imagine not being accepted, especially for who you are. Also, she wants to do good. She wants to find her purpose. I don't know why this is so difficult for some viewers to understand. Like, there are selfish people in the MCU. She's not one of them. And, yes, so, that brings us to the characters. Iman Vellani plays Kamala Khan, a 16-year-old Pakistani-American high school student from Jersey City who writes superhero fan fiction, particularly of Captain Marvel. And, let's see, yeah, and the next thing is some of the spoilers. So, I just, I wanted to quote from, this is, this is the Wikipedia article for Iman Vellani. Born in Karachi, Pakistan, Vellani moved to Canada when she was a year old and was raised in the is Ismaili faith, a branch of Islam. She graduated from Unionville High School in Markham, Ontario. Vellani was selected as a member of the TIFF Next Wave Committee at the 2019 Toronto Film F International Film Festival before being cast as in Ms. Marvel at the end of her last year of high school. Vellani had planned to attend the Ontario College of Art and Design University, with a focus on integrated media. I've... And she's apparently, like, she's directed, I want to say, three short films, and she's she appears in one of them. I hope that she does keep that up as well, because she seems tremendously... Like, she has a gift for that. You know, and, I mean, she's not going to be playing Kamala Khan forever, I think she can handle other roles. I, I think she can handle roles that are less like herself. You know, she she's already shown tremendous talent as an actress. Like she she didn't think she would be acting. You know, she she as especially not in something so big. And yeah, it's like she's she's a natural. She she apparently didn't even she had not taken like acting lessons lessons before at least before uh what's it called doing a audition for this show you know and yeah she's like i hate when people say you know yeah pro tip if you say the words it's easy to play yourself in a movie or tv show you have not tried acting it's it, it's it's a lot harder than a lot of people give credit for. If the character is like yourself, you have something to build on there. You don't have to start from, from scratch, but it's still difficult. And she, you know, sometimes she's happy, sometimes she's sad, sometimes she's scared, sometimes she's excited, and it's always convincing. I never felt like her performance was, you know, lacked credibility. And, yeah, it's, I don't think only fans should be cast. It, uh, I think you should be allowed to be cast in one of these, even if you are not a fan of the character. But it's so cool when it's a fan of the character, though. And she is, like, she, you know, she's talking about in an interview, you know, she picked up the comic and she was like, it's me, it's, that's, 
that's exactly you know and and she like she put a lightning bolt on her shirt so that the next day she could be like do you like Kamala Khan I like Kamala Khan and everyone was like it's are you dressed as the Flash? And she's like, no, I'm not the Flash. And so she she brought the comics, so she'd be like, that's who I am, you know. Wait, was it the next day? At some point in school, she she wore, you know, and yeah. It's and and the the you know, she's she's absolutely adorable in the role, and her energy and passion are contagious. I I don't understand how you can watch this and not be immensely invested in you know the, some someone who feels that strongly about something that just you know I, I mean I guess I could understand it if it was something bad but it's not she wants to be accepted by her peers and you know the idea of being a superhero is really exciting to her I don't understand how someone who likes the MCU can't relate to that in one of the trailers and episodes, Kamala says, it's not the brown girls from Jersey who saved the world, which is just heartbreaking to hear her say. And the show is about how she comes to realize that statement doesn't have to be true. She, like anybody, can save the world. And Sagar Shaikh plays Amir Khan, Kamala's older brother, Tanisha's husband. And in an interview, he talks about you know, he's basically a goody two-shoes. And so he's always getting the parents' permission because they trust him more. And he tries to be a parent to Kamala as well, but she doesn't actually need him to be. She's stronger than he is. And once again, this is the actor saying that. And Rish Shah plays Kamran, a boy Kamala has a crush on. I'm not going to go too much into detail about his character, but he is remarkably smooth and like really cool like I'm not into dudes so I'm not attracted to him but like if I was still in high school I think I'd want to be friends with him he's he is very cool and you can completely understand why Kamala and and it's actually also when they start talking they love all like they don't agree on absolutely every single movie but they've watched all of the same you know, Indian and Pakistani movies. So they, you know, and, and like, it's, it's so clear that she, you know, other than him, she doesn't usually get to talk about these because, you know, the parents don't, you know, the, the movies that are, or it's, it's not the same when she talks to her parents about these movies. Anyway, and Zenobi Shroff plays Muniba Khan, Kamala's mother, Yusuf's wife. And she, you know, she speaks very frankly in multiple separate interviews about how unfairly ne negatively Muslims have been viewed in America, especially after 9-11, and that she wants the show to help normalize Muslims. And I think the show does a great job. I, I hope she's happy with how it, yeah. I, th I think the interview might have been before she saw the finished episodes. It sounded a little like that, at least. And, yeah, in, in various interviews, you know, there, there's a miniseries that really shows the normal, happy South Asian immigrant family. The mother has a difficult time letting go of her teenage daughter. She wants to keep protecting her because she came to America because there were more opportunities. You know, she came, she came there for her daughter. Meanwhile, her daughter wants to fit in more than they already have by assimilating, you know. And Mohan Kapoor as Yusuf Khan. And he, yeah, so Kamal's father, Maniba's husband, he's an Indian actor, voice artist, and television host who is well known in Indian cinema and the Indian television industry. He's not as strict and stern as Maniba, but he does still want her to follow their rules. And Matt Lintz, who you may remember from Piranha 3 D plays Bruno Corelli, Kamala's best... He's done other horror movies as well when he was younger. Kamala's best friend. He's very charming and adorable. He's he's basically really into technology and, like, he's the, you know... Once the... the 
yeah, he he tries to help her and her family with technical stuff. I in the pilot he sets up I think they call it a Zuzu for the the house and he even programmed it to understand Urdu. So yeah. And Yasmin Fletcher plays Nakia Bahadir, Kamala's close friend who is fiercely political. And I should say all three of the, you know, Kamala, Bruno and Nakia, all three of them are fiercely loyal to each other. The you know, they they tease each other. But when you know, yeah. They they make a strong effort to always be there for each other when there are problems. And yeah, it's just it's it's great to see them together. And Life Nakli plays Sheikh Abdullah, Kamala's religious mentor mentor and an imam from Jersey City. And that's the thing like the show really is about how to reconcile, like, how to, how to find a way to be that, like, is respectful of her culture and her family, her parents, and is in, that isn't in conflict with the, the teachings of, of Islam, of the, that the Imam had, had, yeah you know, have have taught her. And and finally something that also fits with the American yeah. And Travina Springer plays Taisha Hillman, Kamala's sister in law, Amir's wife. And right, and Laurel Marsden plays Zoe Zimmer, which I have to admit that she she was not quite what I expected. She gives a good performance. Yeah, all of them give convincing performances. And I realize that there are some major characters that I did not talk about. Some of them it's because they're spoilers. Right, and quoting fellow critic, and it's great to see characters who are not the usual white saccharine Americans we usually see. The world's the world consists of many nationalities and religions. To those who can't handle female lead characters, especially those who aren't in the usual blonde blue eye mold, boo hoo. And the dialogue is quite good. You always get like I think one of the uh, one of the ways to know if dialogue is good is try to take a line out of context and and like ignore what character said it and and try to say could someone else have said that same line and would it have mattered you know like basically the way that Kamala's father talks to her should not be the way that the school principal talks to her. Should not be the way that her friends talk to her. You know, you should be able to get a sense of their relationship from how they talk. And I, I think it was always the the case with this that you you could always pair up a line with the character. Maybe a couple of the expositiony lines could have been other characters, but. You know, exposition is a necessary evil. It's it's great when you can do it in a subtle way, but you gotta get it done one way or the other. So the cinematography was handled by Carmen Cabana, Robert Heivart, and Jules O'Loughlin. And uh, let's see, each of them are listed as two episodes each, so I'm gonna guess that that's what, yeah. Some of the cinematography in the show is NCU bland, but there are some very dynamic shots, these impressive long takes, and there's, I'm not going to give away how many, but at least once the camera will spin around a group as they, they're they talking and like it's it's tense and just, yeah, I, I when the when the cinematography is good in the show, it is incredible. And the editing, I can't completely. Uh, there's a there's a series editorial department listed on IMDb, 
but uh, okay, I guess assistant editor Rick Ives and Jenny Lindemood. I I guess were the ones who edited it, and yeah, like it has this. It, the um, I never felt like it was standing still. There's always something going on, but it's not exhausting. They did a really great job. Like every so often, you know, will be completely in Kamala's head. You know, it's it's just something that she's imagining, and they just they do such a great job of differentiating this. You know, this is this is editing more than director because the director doesn't handle the, the music and the color editing and all this stuff. And yeah, like there's this... Yeah, on, on at least one occasion, Kamala is like in seventh heaven. She's so happy. And she like dances. And they, like the color is like she's in a, a musical and this is the song about how happy she is, the things are going well, that kind of thing. And just, yeah. And and the the um, I don't think there's a single scene that lasts too long. There are no shots that just you know that don't convey anything. That are just there because someone thought it looked pretty or something. The um, I guess I should briefly get into the structural editing. There are definitely some episodes that spend a very long time on something, and yeah, how do I how do I go into this without spoiling anything? By the end of the show, there are things that the show spent a lot of time on that maybe doesn't get fully resolved or there's not that good of a payoff on and where when you look back you're like they didn't need to spend that much time on that and this you know the show is six episodes long i really hope at some point someone convinces the the people at marvel some of these shows need more than six episodes because I'm going to very quickly bring up, yeah, so Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki Season 1, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, and now Ms. Marvel have been six episodes each, and with each of them there's been some pacing issues because of this. And I'm not saying that WandaVision had a perfect run that had nine episodes. <sighs> yeah, I, I hope that they... Currently, okay, She-Hulk is supposed to be nine episodes. Secret Invasion is six. Iron Heart is six. I mean, it's it's possible that they can make it work, but so far, it really you get the sense that things were supposed to be different, and then they realize because like it's one thing when you know way back when they're planning the schedule, which I think is a big part of this. You know, it's easy to, to slot in a six-episode run. And, you know, they want there to be something so people come in, keep coming to Disney Plus at least once a week, every week. You know, nearly every week. There aren't very many weeks that have no, you know. So, yeah. There's a difference from saying, you know, okay, six episodes. And then once they start writing and directing and cutting and realizing, oh, wow, this... This should maybe have been longer. And, you know, part of it is also that the episodes are not, uh, they're not all the exact same length, but they are in like the 40 minute range. You know, I think this show could have benefited from at least one episode being longer than that, which is what, you know, WandaVision, the finale was considerably longer than the, yeah. And, yeah, so the, the animation, the 2D animation that bring, you know, that illustrates how, you know, Kamala imagines, you know, how she wishes the world was sometimes, you know, sometimes it's very simple, like this, just having these figures 
moving on, you know, th these graffiti figures start to move and morph on, on like brick. Sometimes it, the, the entire image is fully animated. And sometimes it's just little flourishes, which I think, it's, you know, WandaVision episode two, Vision would have appreciated. The special effects are probably some of the one of the weakest aspects of this. I, I hate to say it, but it does become very clear that this show did not have the budget of, for example, Falcon the Winter Soldier. And I don't think it's a problem that the action of this show is not the action of that show. But there are definitely... There are times where the, the special effects definitely are distracting and they're... Uh, the... I would, I, th the, the show does sometimes cut corners, like instead of seeing the powers, you'll see someone's reaction to them, or maybe the power will be reflected in something instead of seeing the full thing. I think largely they made these work fine, like, you know, the reaction shot, like if you have a big enough budget, you can make a movie with no reaction shots, because if you go way, way back, the reaction shot started as something to cut to so that the you could go from stage one of special effect to stage two and onwards because you know now that you can animate you you don't have to do that but it used to be that you had to cut away from the effect so you can move on to the next effect you know reaction shots are underappreciated and i do think they showed it you know it makes a lot of sense here's a character seeing someone else use superpowers Let's watch them. Let's let's actually see their face as they're reacting to something, you know, amazing. Now, yeah, various critics have said that the effects are cheap. Now, let's see. Yeah, so this was filmed in... Multiple locations, is that a spoiler to say? I think they, they had some really interesting, compelling settings in, in the show. So the action, I wouldn't say it was bad. I understand the people who do think it was. I would say it worked for the show. Like, I, I didn't go into this expecting action that I didn't end up getting on the show the yeah I mean I've already mentioned this really isn't the show for you if you just want like big fights I saw some people criticizing Moon Knight for that as well because it's not that action heavy you know someone writing like you know we watch the MCU for action well just watch one of the movies you know like I, I don't really understand why people watch a thing, and then, you know, it wasn't what they're used to, and so they're mad about it, instead of being like, that was interesting. I Actually, yeah, you know what? That is it. We're so used to these. We, we're all in these bubbles. We we're, we expect the exact same thing every single time. And to be fair, the MCU hasn't exactly... The MCU has kind of set itself up for us expecting the same thing every time. But I, th I think they're, it's really interesting, these more recent, you know, yeah. But yeah, you know, there's chasing, there's fighting, you know, it's, it's easy to follow. Sometimes it gets fairly creative. There isn't too much of it. Some will definitely say there's too little of it. So the, the, the score, I, uh, Alishki is listed as a musician, but otherwise it's music clearance and music supervisor. So, yeah. I'm going to quote fellow critics because they are much more, they have, yeah. The soundtrack is exotic, not your typical fare, and complements the scenes very well. Combining the Gen Z sounds of Ritvitz and Hassan Rahim with songs from icons such as Abida Parveen and 
R. Rahman, the new MCU show uses music as a diplomatic tool to unite generations and nations. Beautifully said. And I don't know who any of those people are, but yeah. I, I am very much not a music person. There are just a few musicians that I really care about. So the the sound design is quite good. The the superpowers and you know super uh yeah, the 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 things that happen on the show that are not natural, you know, they have to make no they have to figure out what what sound does that make, you know. And I think they largely did great. Now, I try to give people, like, a, a decent idea of, like, how much to watch in order to figure out if you really like it. I would say, if you're not invested in the show by the end of episode two, I don't know that the rest of the show is really going to change that. I, I think that would be how to, yeah. And let's, for some people, include episode three. If by the end of episode three you're not, then I don't think it's gonna win you over. So I, yeah, I would say the the best. Yeah, I tr I try. I I seriously try to just get down to just one number one thing that I love the most. I'm going to have to, it's a tie. More well-written representation, the acting, the, the visualization of the thoughts, the, the, yeah, just this journey of trying to make, you know, Kamala trying to shape her identity without abandoning any of what she yeah. Uh, the worst aspect, it does feel like the show changes a lot along the way, sometimes abruptly. I don't think it's a big deal. Other people do. So, the worst aspect to, according to other people, too teen-oriented, not enough action, too much panning, not comic accurate, and I refuse to consider that some of the changes work better for the MCU or for a TV show. This wasn't made for me, and I think it should have been. Still, others said, I didn't like it. Others again wrote, I really didn't like it. Dude, if you can't explain why, just upvote someone else's review. Don't clog up the review pages with literally nothing. Like, some people just said, I didn't like it. Other people also didn't. Other people also didn't bother to write. Just upvote them. I, I don't understand why you feel you absolutely have to write your own thing if you have nothing to actually write. I was most worried that the show would suffer greatly. Oh, oh, right. I don't think any of those complaints are... You know what? It's valid. It's perfectly okay not to like it. I don't personally think that any of those are a big deal. Clearly others did. You might. You know, that's perfectly fine. The, the only thing I have a problem with is is just writing I didn't like it without writing why. I, I don't, that's, there's no reason to do that. Anyway, the thing I was most worried about was the MCU show villain problem. And ultimately, there is some of it here. I think the show survives it better than some of the other shows. And, yeah, you know, I already mentioned the pilot and the finale are great. The overall season is also really, really good. Like, hypothetically, if I could go and, like, change some things, there are definitely some, you know, I, I actually suggested some things that I would have changed. Certainly in my thoughts video for episode six, I forget if I did for some of the others, but, yeah, you know, I do have some issues with it, but I think... The strengths hugely outweigh the negatives. Some of the trailers do give a little bit too much away. 
it's it's difficult to to dive into the marketing without getting some spoilers i do think they did an incredible job at hiding a lot of like there were things in the show that i did not at all expect and i do also think the the like if you just go to disney plus you know right now the the some of the yeah if if you go to the banner which says season finale now streaming it actually shows something from the finale so try to avoid looking at the banner but yeah if you just go to the uh what what is that called thumb thumbnail thing if you just go to that i mean there's there's a little bit of, of spoiler stuff there, yeah, un unfortunately. But it is also a visually, uh, what's the word, arresting kind of, it's, you know, you, you look at that and you want to see more. So, yeah. Let's see the, yeah, so the age rating on Disney Plus is 12 plus, which Apparently, for some people, looked like a PG, not a PG-13. I, yeah, that's, I mean, I guess 12 plus and PG, whatever. I agree. No, no one under the age of 12 should watch the show. I, I definitely think there's, there's a little too much disturbing content for that. But if you are 12 or above, you know, maybe also, like, if, if you're a parent of a teenager who wants to watch the show, maybe some of the some of the stuff in it you know yeah so on rotten tomatoes this is certified fresh the critics consensus says ms marvel is a genuinely fresh addition to the mcu both stylistically and substantively with iman vilani ably provided powering proceedings with her supersized charisma it has a 98 percent that's pretty good that's that's a yeah Based on 263 critics, only 9 of them rated it rotten. And the audience score is 79% based on uh, 6,956. So the average rating for critics was 8.20 out of 10, and the average user rating was 4.1, I think that's out of 5. And, oh, right, I, is there a thing, I'm just, I, I swear I'm not going to spend forever, but I wanted to see if maybe, can you look at what the MCU Disney Plus shows have as a, okay, right now I'm showing everything in just one, is it possible? I'll I'll do a quick okay so yeah WandaVision has 98 91 Falcon 83 Loki season 1 92 what if season 1 94 Hawkeye 92 Moon Knight 86 so yeah it's higher it's the it's the highest of all of them the Disney Plus ones I'm not looking at the the other ones but for some of them, it's not that much higher. But yeah, I. Uh, yeah, my, my personal rating is coming up. But the. Yeah. And yeah, so the, the. On Metacritic, this has 78 out of 100 based on 23 critic reviews. Now, the user score is 4.0 based on 208 ratings, and the amount of user reviews is something that I will have in just a few seconds. Is that... Wait, that, that sounds wrong to me. I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to check it in another place. I swear I'm not going to take forever. Unless the browser takes forever to load. Which it looks like. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. So it has 100 
and 17 user reviews. And there we go. Okay, so on IMDb, it currently has one, yeah, when I copied this in an hour ago, 1,754 user reviews. So that's pretty decent engagement. And when I, yeah, when I checked an hour or so ago, there were 13 links in the IMDb external review section, and 12 of them were in English. Now, I guess I will just very briefly. Yeah, so I read the the 100 top voted, top rated IMDb user reviews, and as as research, and I checked, you know, each of them. You know, when you add a user review, you can choose how to rate the movie. You know, anywhere from 1 out of 10 to 10 out of 10. 21 gave it 1 out of 10. Or, yeah. 21 of the top voted reviews, of the ones considered most useful, were reviews that gave it 1 out of 10. 14 were for 2 out of 10, 15 for 3, 15 for 4. 4 for 5, 4 for 6, 3 for 7, 8 for 8, 11 for 9, and 10 for 10. So this is a negatively received show by, by users. It has a 6.2 rating on IMDb where, you know, I, I, I saw someone else point out the m most of the Disney Plus MCU shows have, you know, seven or higher. I really wish we could control for just like, okay, but how many people actually explained why they didn't like it? And how many just wrote, I didn't like it? How many just didn't like that it was different? But based on 65,339 MDB user votes, yeah, 6.2 out of 10. So 28.2% gave it a 10. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. 23.3% gave it a one, which makes no sense to me. I don't, I don't understand. If you give something a one out of 10, you're saying either that everything, everything in it is bad, or you're saying that the weaknesses so greatly outweigh the strengths that none of them, you know, come out of, like, you know, there, there are things that, like, uh, let's see. I don't think I remember a single positive thing about Batman and Robin, for example. I, I think I, it's been years since I watched it. Not sure that's going to change anytime soon. But yeah, that was one out of ten. But otherwise, like, I mean, I don't think I, from what I recall, I don't think Speed 2 was that good of a movie. But if I recall, like, the villain gave an like a, a fun performance. Like, you could keep watching for that. You could enjoy that. I feel like a 1 out of 10, that's when it's, like, technically incompetent. Which, again, like, there are parts of Batman and Robin where you're like, that's so clearly CG, or like you know, there's a there's a part where something that's supposed to be like ice, like it wobbles, and it's like I I get it, I I realize they couldn't have made it perfect, but you're supposed to catch stuff like that in editing, you know, and and don't don't focus the camera so much on the CG if you can't make it convincing, and you know all the performances in that are just such like. I don't understand giving this a one, but to each their own. I guess I could just... Yeah, so the 9.9% gave it 8, 9.6% gave it 7, 6.8% gave it 9, 7.4 gave it 6, 
5.2 gave it 5, and 3% and lower gave it 4, 3, and 2. Like, I, if, if, you, if you think it wasn't that well made, I, I don't think I can understand someone saying giving this less than 5, at the very lowest 5. And I, I, I have a hard time understanding how you go below 7, but to his throne. I recommend the written reviews by Adnan M. and Ashley Manning. And... I guess I could just very briefly... So... Yeah. So yeah, I recommend this to anyone interested in the experience of being, you know, I guess not quite second generation Muslim in America, but having moved to America when they were very, very little. And yeah, you know, trying to reconcile a conservative culture and background and, and parents and family and, and such with the wor the way that things are in the new, you know, yeah. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to be into superhero stories, but if you're just here for the superhero story, this might not be your kind of thing. You, you might find it not quite enough. Yeah. And, yeah, so, I try to go into, you know, would I watch this again recently? Yeah, you know, I, I watched the finale Wednesday. I could sit down and watch more episodes, like, right now. And if, if like, I know that's not going to be the case, but if, like, I checked Disney Plus right after hitting, after I stopped recording this video, and I check Disney Plus, and there's somehow a seventh episode. I'm watching it right away. You know, I am, I am so psyched for the Marvels. You know, all three stars are talented. The director is incredibly talented. She also directed Candyman and did an amazing job on that one. Just, yeah. I rate this 10 daydreaming superpowered high schoolers out of 10. And... Well, yeah, once again, I'm not saying everything about it is perfect. I am saying the strengths so greatly outweigh the weaknesses that I find it impossible, personally impossible. I'm not saying there's something wrong with other people who didn't venture less than a 10 out of 10. So I went hen bleh, went ahead and ranked worst to best keeping in mind i love all of them they are all amazing i'm ranking how much i love them not whether or not i love them oh so the overall show worst to best loki what if both season one hawkeye the falcon and the winter soldier moon knight ms marvel and wandavision ultimately wandavision so comes out on top the finale worst to best hawkeye the falcon and the winter soldier moon knight ms marvel and wandavision I am not including the season one finales for the shows that are getting multiple seasons. I don't think that makes any sense to compare those to series finales. Anyway, the pilot, worst to best. What if Loki, Hawkeye, the Falcon, the Lord Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision? So yes, I don't, I don't know if anything's going to be able to top WandaVision. I just, it, it's about grief. It's about sitcoms. It's about how sitcoms are like comfort food, and the MCU is currently kind of taking that. You know, the MCU, it's not the most challenging stuff. To, you know, we, we do kind of use it to feel good, you know. And Wanda has always been such a compelling character. So has Vision. It's just, yeah, it, I... I don't know if anything's going to be able to top it, but Ms. Marvel came incredibly close, and so did Moon Knight. But yeah, 
So, so yeah, next is She-Hulk. I know people are freaking out about the CGI in the trailer. It's a trailer. It's not finished. I think the, the concept looks great. And the I, I was very happy with the trailers. Tra trailer? Trailers we've gotten. I guess there's only been one full trailer and then the teaser trailer. But yeah. So, this is the end of the video. So, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what was your favorite MCU Disney Plus show. The... Did you think that there was anything major about this show that should have been different? Are you hoping, you know, are you looking forward to the Marvels? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like it was mean to Kamala. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two or more links to stuff like a relevant playlist. That's just a, a suggested view if you watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video, instead of in a separate video, since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you want my videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.